Good morning. Good morning. There's no rain. <laughs> There's just two more weeks of spring. And spring and warmer weather, we hope, will be here. Can you believe it? In no time at all, we'll be pulling out those cushions for the lawn chairs and the patio furniture. We'll begin to see all of those signs coming out saying yard sale, both Saturday and Sunday. You know, I was cleaning out a room the other day, and I came across my fishing rod. They were sitting over in the corner, and one of them was crying. It wanted to get out there. And I was thinking about how I told my daughter that the last time I went fishing, I caught a big fish. You know, we all have those big fish stories. But in fact, it really wasn't big. It was only about that size. I'm longing to get out there again. Flea markets, they're coming out too. The weather's getting warmer. Flea markets will be opening up all over the place. The markets will begin to fill with old and new vendors out there selling <coughs> their wares. The lore of the market. It's an old story told in our gospel lesson, yet it's still applicable today. Though we usually don't set up those kinds of markets in our holy places, markets represent the mindset of a secular society where we put our values usually show up in a market. And sometimes the influence of those markets do creep into our holy places. Those holy spaces, those temples of sorts. We hear Jesus talking about the body as a temple, particularly his body. Incidentally, we as disciples are his body. Growing up, I was never taught that our bodies were temples. But I guess if they were meant to house the spirit of the Lord, then they must be. What do you think? And three, they must be of the influence of the marketplaces we encounter. I think for many of us, it's unnerving to hear the story of Jesus so violently destroying things in a marketplace. Those thunderbolt actions of Jesus was certainly a wake-up call for those who attended the market, or at least it should have been. But like us, wake-up calls don't come so easily. For some of us, Thunderbolts are needed, particularly when it's in respect to things about our own lives. But in the case of our gospel lesson, it was those who attended the market. It's called a market, but perhaps it's more like temples in need of repentance. This Lenten season, we're all challenged with that task of shifting our minds from a market mentality to a holy place of repentance and goodwill, and hopefully before a thunderbolt strikes. I think we all can appreciate that. But just how does one repent during this Lenten season? Now, I know we've all been doing this year after year after year, but perhaps it would not hurt if we talked about repentance just a little bit more. Now, in order to do this, we have to understand that repentance 
has two parts to it. Is it okay to talk about this? Are we all okay with that? It's like 8 o'clock, nobody shook their head, yes or no, so I'm going to have to tell you like I told 8 o'clock, since you're not answering, I'm going to go ahead and do it anyway. <laughs> like I said, in order to do this, we have to understand that the word repentance has two parts to it. An acknowledgement, meaning I recognize something about myself, and an action, meaning I'm going to do something about it. Repentance, the act of acknowledgement and change. Well, there's no right or wrong way to repent this Lenten season, but here's a few tips for those of us who need a little bit of guidance. The first thing is, find a peaceful moment. Whether that be in your car while you are waiting for someone to come out and join you, whether it be home alone, whether it be a day you come into the church, come into the chapel and sit, no matter where it is, find a peaceful moment and just sit quietly. Let God's Holy Spirit speak to us about the things which we have been struggling with and are in need of change. It could be an attitude. It could be a behavior. It could be something else. I know Lent in time we often think, well, let's give up a vice. But maybe this year we think a little broader than a vice. Maybe we think about ourselves. Because, you know, we are really hard on ourselves we will gladly go out and help another person. But how often will we help ourselves? In order to really help others, we have to help ourselves first. Now, I say let God's Holy Spirit speak to us because it doesn't lie. Oftentimes, we will lie, especially when it's about ourselves. We'll convince ourselves that, oh, you know, a problem isn't really a problem, or things really aren't what they are, keeping us stuck and unable to repent. But the Holy Spirit will reveal the truth. And remember, the Holy Spirit speaks in a variety of ways. I'm reminded of a story I once heard of a woman with limited resources but with strong cultural beliefs. Now, usually when we think and hear someone talk about culture, we think about race. But I'm talking about a different type of culture. I'm talking about the kind of culture that was developed when we were this big. The kind we got from our family, those attitudes, those thought processes we got from our family, our friends, our neighbors, the community that surrounded us as we developed. So this woman with her strong cultural belief, oh, she was magnificent. I heard she was a dancer. I'm told first with a local group, I think it was called uh, uh, Up With People. Has, has anybody heard of that organization, Up With People? It's a community of youth. They go around from town to town putting on performances, and they kind of get their feet wet for professional entertainment. And then next she went on professionally, and she must have did very well because she was well known. I'm told she was adored. And like most entertainers, she had a big ego. She professed that she would live to be 106 years old. Now that's a feat. Because even with today's technology, most of us don't get that far. But she said, 
she was going to live to be 106 years old. Now, as she aged, her resources dwindled, and she became hungry because she had not eaten for days. Steeped in her pride, she refused to reach out for help. She became weak and was unable to even get out of bed. She was, in fact, perishing at age 64. One day, a writer from a national magazine decided to write a story about her and went to her home. The door was unlocked, so she made her way in and called her name. She found the woman lying on a couch, emaciated and weak. The writer ran across the street to a store and brought back a platter of spare ribs. Oh, is that what I have to do to get some spare ribs, is not eat? The platter had spare ribs sitting on top of sweet potatoes and green beans. The starving woman took one look at the platter of food and said, I don't eat pork, and refused to eat. Some people refuse to be awakened. Now the next thing, now that we have been awakened by the Holy Spirit after sitting quietly and been informed of the areas where we have fallen short and we've acknowledged it, let our remorse about it not be negative and draw us down, but let our remorse propel us into a redemptive change a kind of change that glorifies God. You know, when we acknowledge our shortcomings and then change, we glorify God because we share in the image of God. Saul, we know Saul. Saul was not aware that the work that he was doing was wrong and hurtful. He believed that he was glorifying God when he was persecuting Christians. But then, on his journey, like on our journey, the Holy Spirit spoke and revealed the truth which changed his life. We all know that story. It is a story of repentance, recognition, and change. Do you have one? Do you have a story of recognition and change in your life? If not, sit quietly. Listen to the Holy Spirit speak truth into your heart. And you'll have one. And oh, what a story that will be, I'm sure. And then once that has occurred, the last thing to do is smile. Smile and praise God. For within, within the act of repentance, your temple has been torn down and raised up, made holy by the Holy Spirit this Lenten season. May God bless you. May God's Holy Spirit enlighten you, and may your temple be cleared of all markets, even if you don't eat pork. Amen.